everybody. Whoa. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Shelly. I'm a second grade teacher in Northern California and welcome to a day in the life of distance learning. So this is gonna be the second video in my day in the life of a distance teacher vlog series. And in the last video, I walked you through our schedule, how I'm laying out our Zooms and all of that. So I'll make sure to link that below in case you want any of that detail. So I thought it'd be more fun for today to kind of walk you through A, what we're doing today, and B, what I'm having the kids do at home because I think that's a big struggle and every district is different. We have to have 130 minutes, I believe, of at home work each day for the kids. So I wanna show you some of the things that we're doing um, and how we're making it manageable. So that'll be on our agenda. I also wanna show you some things in the classroom that I put together that I'm really excited about. And then I also wanna show you just like my kind of setup right here, it's nothing fancy. Um, and last but not least, I wanna address the fact that no, I am not pregnant. I had a few people in the last video because I guess like you could see my stomach in the thumbnail thought that I was pregnant again. And the fact of the matter is no. I just still have a belly and I don't really care. <laughs> and because I'm wearing a flowy dress, I knew people were gonna come and ask again. No, I am not pregnant. Um, yes, we do want another baby, but we are gonna wait a little bit. So no, I'm not pregnant. Okay, so this is quite literally where I am distance teaching. I am not using my TV. I thought I was going to, but I am not. It's um, not the prettiest setup, but it works for me. I just have this crate and I have my computer on top of it. I thought I was gonna be standing while I taught, but to be honest, it's really hard to see all the kids when I'm far away. Um, so I have been sitting and this works out just fine. So I have my cart here with all my materials, all the things that I would need. And then this is where I sit and I do my stuff. And then I have my dot camera here. So it's really not that fancy, but this is where I sit. And then I have my whiteboard that I do phonics and anything that I need to do on that right there. So this is my really sad view this year. And no, my classroom is not put together. Okay, before we dive into everything that I have the kids do when they're at home, um, because I'm gonna have to teach before I talk about that because I got here late. <laughs> I want to show you this little area of my room that I finally put together. It took me so long, um, but I'm really excited about it. Okay, let me flip you around. Okay, so if you're also here for the classroom setup series that will probably spill into October, um, you know that I'm getting a small group table and it is going to go right here. So this is going to be my teacher space slash guided reading. I got rid of my teacher desk. I am gonna get something small um, up here just so I can sit with my doc camera and teach from up there um, when I need to, but this is gonna be my main space. So that being said, I have moved some things back here. I don't know what I'm gonna use these for yet. Their purpose changes every single year. So I want them here though, because I know I'm going to need them for something. I have my teacher toolbox. This is like my random tech drawer. So that's there. And then I have my little copy station here. And then I have my hanging file folders that I love. This is the system I've been using for a while that really works. But this is what I'm so excited about. I mentioned everything that goes in my guided reader binders in the last video, but in case you missed it, um, I purchased all of these guided reading pretty much units um, from, oh my God, I'm so bad. I can't remember her name. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I will link her down below. Um, but she creates bundles and I have really struggled with guided reading. so. I've printed and assembled all of these binders. So just really quickly, I want to show you. I put everything in a sleeve. So these are the um, readers that come with it. And then all of the lesson plans and the activities and the actual readers themselves are all in here. Sight words. So if we ever, or when we ever come back to the classroom and if I can ever do guided reading, I am set and ready to go. And then down here is where I have my writing curriculum and my um, intervention binder, which I've talked about in previous videos that I will link down below. Again, I don't know what's gonna go in here, but um, something, I might actually move this down here because I'm thinking that I'm gonna have something here for each guided reading group, um, like work that they're working on or folders or whatever, I don't know. 
and then I have my running records stuff down there. I'm so proud of myself that I finally got this done. This project literally took me two weeks. And then I just have these cute little guys up here for now. Um, I got all of that at TJ Maxx, I think. And then I'm gonna put something here to cover up this really ugly thing. And then I have my blue and green rolling cart right here. This is from Michael's. I spray painted it. You cannot buy it blue and green. So yeah, I'm really proud of myself. And then my little mini fridge is gonna go here. Again, I'm getting all new chairs because they're for big people and I have little people. Oh, I also got these. These are shoe organizers and I had no cubbies and you guys, so they're pretty small. Like here's my hand, right? For reference but the paper fits in there just fine. Their pencil box fits in there just fine. And all of the cubby systems are like hundreds of dollars. I got these on Facebook marketplace for like 20 bucks for both of them. So I'm so excited about them. I don't know where they're going to live, but I have them. So, so I am going to teach math right now. And then my alarm is literally going off, like start your zoom. Um, but I'm going to go teach and then I will pick you guys back up. And I want to walk you through what I have the kids do um, while they're at home. So stay tuned. Hello. So our zoom is over. So I sat down and I pulled all the things that I want to show you, um, that I have in front of me that the kids have with them at home. And I think it'd be helpful to walk you through kind of what we do for each subject and what we're having the kids do at home. Um, some of them are programs. Some of them are like hard copied things. A lot of this we sent home at the beginning of the year, almost everything actually including passwords and logins and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna start with reading. We'll do reading, writing, math, and then social studies and science. That way if you need ideas um, or extra things to be giving the kids to do at home. So let's start with reading. Um, we use Benchmark for our reading curriculum. So we watched my last one. We do a whole group session and then eventually we're gonna do small group reading as well, which will be guided reading, which is a whole nother ball game. So we do our whole group reading lesson, um, Benchmark. And Benchmark actually has shortened the lesson specifically for distance learning, which is great. But they give um, all of these little pamphlets, they give us consumables at the beginning of the year. So I sent home the first four units with the kids. So they use this while they're um, reading with me. And then if there's anything I want them to do in this afterwards, I, um, I will tell them to do this. But they have this at home. Mostly for reading, we are using um, internet programs. So our district uses iReady. That's like where it's targeted specifically for their reading level. Um, and we use Raz Kids to track reading levels, to do writing records and things like that. But the one that I have been loving and I am so excited has entered into my life is brand new and it is called Dreamscape. Um, it's through the company Squiggle Park. I will have everything linked down below, but I'm really excited to show it with you guys. So if you guys are familiar with Prodigy, um, it's similar in terms of it is a game where the kids are like battling and trying to defend and they love it, but it is directly linked to reading. Like they can't progress in the game unless they read a passage, pay attention and answer things correctly, which I love. Um, so I'm gonna show you on my screen here kind of what it looks like. So this is the setup right here. They have, I think they call this their dwell, right? And so they have to protect it. They have to build it out and do a bunch of things. The kids understand it way more than I do, but essentially they have to, like I said, answer questions in order to progress in the game. Now, the reason I love it as a teacher is because first it is state standards aligned, right? And just like Prodigy, they give you the option to like assign certain skills to certain students, which is great. And then on the back end, I can track all of their skills. I can see what specific skills kids are struggling with. And then I can assign lessons in iReady or any other program that we're using that target those specific skills. So we have been loving Dreamscape. The kids absolutely love it because like I said, the game buys them in and now they're like actually excited to read and, and pay attention to what they're reading because they progress in the game. So this is a reading assignment that we have linked at least three days a week. Um, if they wanna go on it more, they're more than welcome to, but I am like assigning it about three days a week because they enjoy it and I'm getting a lot of really good information from it. So again, I will link all of that down below. Oh, best part, it's 100% free like absolutely free, which is great. So I will link that down below. Go check them out. Hope you guys love it. Let me know if you end up using it because um, I hope I'm not the only one. So that's mainly what we do for at home reading. We also have them like reading to the self and other things as we progress. Like I said, um, they'll be getting some extra things. So that brings us to writing. 
We haven't done a lot of explicit writing instruction yet because we've only been in school for two weeks. However, I want them writing every day and I want there to be accountability. So our kids got um, these binders at the very beginning of the year. And one of the pieces in this binder is a writing journal. You guys, I got all of this from my team teachers. I don't know where they found it. I wish I could link it down below, um, but I don't know where they found it. I'm assuming if you go on Teachers Pay Teachers and just type in second grade writing prompt calendar, something might pop up. But it looks like this. It's the month of August, and each square is a different writing prompt. So what I'm having the kids do is in their writing journal, which I also gave them, they're responding to a prompt. And then I, on my Google Classroom, have a Google Slide linked. So they take a picture of their work on the Google Slide and then submit it that way. So I can actually see their writing. I think eventually I'm gonna get them a separate writing notebook because we do drop off pickup days once a month. So I might have them drop off their notebook and then I will give them an empty one and we'll just do a little back and forth. But I haven't wrapped my head around that yet. So for now, they're using um, the writing calendar and three times a week, I'm having them write. And like I said, the accountability piece is the photo that they're taking. So that's been working for us. Once we really start diving into writing instruction for our next pickup day, I'm gonna be giving them specific writing activities like graphic organizers and all that fun stuff. Um, but that is something that we are doing for at home minutes for writing. So then that brings us to math. I've showed you this before. They have this assigned to them every day. It's a spiral math review. They only complete one day a day. Um, and again, this was given to me. Hopefully you can find something similar on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, so this is the first thing that they do. This is a spiral review throughout all of second grade. Right now it's still first grade review because like I said, second week of school. So this is the first thing that they do on math. Then the second thing that they do is their math homework. Now, I'm not a huge proponent for homework um, for a plethora of reasons. However, due to distance learning, we are using the curriculum, um, that we are given. So they have a math homework assignment that they do every single day. And just like with writing, they take a picture on Google classroom and then they submit it that way. So that's the accountability piece. So they're doing this for math. They are also doing prodigy, which I mentioned earlier and the kids love it. They're also doing reflex math, which is a math facts, um, website that our district purchased. And then they're also doing iReady, which is specific targeted intervention, um, an online program. Again, that's di district purchased. So that's what we're working with on the technology side of things. So that is the bulk of what they are doing for math. Now spelling, I suppose falls into writing. However, I missed it. So, um, each week, oh my God, I have stuff everywhere. Hold on. Okay. So in their binder, we gave them all their spelling words for the first three units, which is like, I don't know, the first 10 weeks or something. Um, so in the spelling section of their binder, they have this spelling menu. This is the exact same one I used in third grade. So if you've been here for a long time, this is the same one. I literally just Googled spelling menu and this came up. So I will try and find this exact one and link this for you down below. Um, anyway, there are a bunch of different activities. So three days a week, I'm having the kids choose an activity and use their spelling words to complete it in their word work journal. So they have a writing journal and a word work journal. Um, so they do that three times a week. And then the other two times a week, our district also purchased Spelling City, which is an awesome website where they go in and they can complete two assignments. They're like really fun little games for them to play. And then on Fridays, they take their spelling test on Spelling City. So we also give them all of their spelling words. These are whatever benchmark is recommending that we use. Um, because the phonics with benchmark matches the spelling words. So phonics is the next thing that they do at home. Um, twice a week, we are assigning phonics pages. And again, these aren't the most like exciting tasks. It like pains me, but I feel like there's such a give and take with distance learning. You just have to let some things go. I'm trying to bring the fun and the engagement in the lessons that I'm providing versus sending home all this fun stuff that may or may not get done. Ugh, I don't know, anyway. Uh, Benchmark comes with these phonics pages. So there are four phonics pages a week. They do one front and back side on one day and one front and back on the other that matches the phonics pattern that our spelling words revolve around. So that is what they're doing for spelling. Um, and we're trying not to assign the same thing every single day. I don't know if you've picked up on that, but we kind of stagger it. The only thing they're getting every day is spiral math and their math assignment. Um, but reading and writing, we're trying to stagger so they're not like 
so overwhelmed. I'm honestly shocked how well these second graders are managing their time though. Like this morning when my timer was counting down, some of them were like, I already finished all of my work for today. And I'm like, okay, are you in college? Because that took me like 20 years to learn. <laughs> like working ahead. Anyway, I lost track. Okay, so then science and social studies are the next category. We are integrating a lot of science and social studies in our ELA, as I'm sure many of you are, because there's just not enough time in the day. Um, or in the Zoom, I should say, to get it all done. However, our social studies curriculum is Studies Weekly, which is great because they have an online component, and so they have these little consumables that the kids have. We gave them to, we gave these to them. Um, so, like for example, today they are working on social studies, so they have the choice to either read this or they can go onto the website and it reads it to them. And then there's like a quick little quiz on the website attached to it. And then today I'm having them fill out the backside and turn it in. So social studies is like about once a week as far as direct social studies. But like I showed you, our first benchmark unit, wherever it went, is government. So I'm pulling in a lot of social studies through our ELA. Okay, so then science. <sighs> I'm so sorry if this is really rambly, but I hope that it helps. So our science we use is mystery science. Again, another dist district purchased thing but it's awesome and Doug makes these videos and they're super engaging. So once a week, I think today, actually Thursday, um, we will pull up a mystery science video. We'll watch it, we'll talk about it. And then some of them have activities that go along with it. We haven't pulled those yet to send home, but in our next drop off, um, we're gonna get them some science materials so they can actually go outside and do a lot more hands-on things. Eventually I want to be doing like, um, I don't wanna say experiments, but like, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Presentations, no demonstrations, thank you, um, science demonstrations for them live, but we're just not there yet. And I'm hoping that we're back in the classroom before that happens, but anyway. Okay, so I think that covers most of what we are having the kids do when they are not with us. I really hope that helps. If you guys do something else um, that you think we would all benefit from, please let us know down in the comments. We love you, we appreciate you so much for that, thanks. That's my little ramble for this video. Um, I don't have my next Zoom until 12.30 and it's 10.40, so I have two hours. Now, um, this is Labor Day, this weekend will be Labor Day weekend and I am going out of town Friday, so I will not be here for our Friday afternoon Zoom. However, because I meet our required minutes with the morning Zoom, I don't have to get a sub, but I am gonna record our afternoon lesson um, to post for the kiddos so they still have it to watch. So that is something that I need to do right now. I also need to review my phonics and reading lesson that I'm giving them this afternoon because I don't remember what it is. And um, that's what I have to do right now. So, okay, so I filmed my lesson for Friday and I pulled everything for this afternoon. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a classroom update. And then I think I have some time to actually clean my classroom because it's disgusting, which is okay. Um, but for today, our Zooms are like, this is the hardest thing for me about distance learning. There's two things. One, <clears throat> in order to get all the instruction in, I feel like a presenter. Like there's no turn and talks. So there's no sharing because the kids don't want to share because they don't want to turn their mics on or their cameras on. I hate that piece of it. I hate how much I'm talking. Um, and then I also hate the checking for understanding. Like it is almost near impossible to do informal assessments via Zoom. Like I have my whiteboard check-ins and I have some kids spotlight their work and I'm having them turn in their work, but it's also just like, is that even accurate? I don't know, I hate that, I hate that so much. I don't know why I just started this tangent. I think my point being is that like the instruction part is so almost dry because I have to get it in and I hate that and I'm hoping that if we stay in this method, I can find ways to not make it so stinking dry but still give all of the instruction, if that makes sense. Ugh. Anyway, today we did our math lesson this morning, and then this afternoon, we're doing our phonics lesson, we're doing a final blends game, and then, just like on their whiteboards, and then um, a quick benchmark reading. We're reading something called Power to Vote, which is like super relevant right now. Um, so that'll go quick, and then I think we're gonna talk about some science, which I hope will be a little bit of fun, because if I'm bored, I know the kids are just like pounding their heads against the wall. So <laughs> we'll try and liven it up a little bit. We throw some brain breaks in there, some go noodle, things like that to try and get them a little bit, you know, moving. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna show you the state of my room. I know this isn't a setup vlog, but I have like an hour of free time right now. Well, free time, um, an hour of time right now, and I wanna kind of put my room back together. Okay, so 
Um, if you follow my setup vlog, you know that all of these chairs have to go because they are big kid chairs. We need little kid chairs. And these desks all have to be lowered and my stupid triangle desks can't. So they have to get rid of these and um, give me rectangle desks. And then my whole group table is coming here. There is one in the cafeteria. I don't know if it's going to be for me. I asked. So I want to see today if potentially I could get that table and then I could have them at least take out all the chairs and these extra desks so I can put some of these furniture items where they're supposed to go. Like I want my fridge away so I can actually start to use it. Um, and this is the rest of my estate. The library is a hot mess. If you saw, I started um, piling books and no progress has been made. So I'm actually gonna go try and find the janitors to see if this can get done and I will keep you posted. So the janitor that knows the answer to that question won't be here till tomorrow, so never mind. So I'm just gonna putz around here for a little bit, try and put some stuff away um, and see if I can at least move things around to get the furniture where I wanna go and then I'll have to get back on a Zoom in like 30 minutes. So I'll take you with me. guys I went a little crazy <laughs> in moving the chairs and the desks out of the way I found where I wanted the furniture but let me show you what I did. okay so starting over here I moved all this along here and then there's gonna be this big space here well that's now where the Chromebooks are going to go because that's this space I like that the mailboxes are in the back of the room and I like that they're elevated. So I moved this from the library and I moved this from under the table. Now, here's my issue. This literally doesn't fit by like ugh, the 16th of an inch, which is so frustrating. So then my next thought was, oh, I can just take this part off or the bottom one and it'll for sure fit. Well, when I built this yesterday, this is the same tool, but I took it home and it would be able to uh, whatever anyway I'm annoyed <laughs> but I love this because then I can have my baskets here so this is like my whole teacher space minus the kids cubbies so I think I think I'm gonna love that once I figure it out oh my god and just like that the day is over so um I'm insane and I fixed the back of my room that I want to show you the rest of the day went really well we did our phonics we did a benchmark reading assignment and the day ended so that was that Somehow this turned into a mini classroom set setup vlog and I apologize, um, but I really like the way the back of the room looks. So I'm gonna show you that and then I'm gonna get out of here. Okay, it looks so organized. So that's the same. I took the bottom like piece off this so it fit. So I did that and then I have my curriculum down here and I have a, two more bins that aren't gonna fit. I might put one in there in there and then move this up top. I don't know, we'll see. But it looks really nice and neat and organized and I'm obsessed with it. So I'm glad that that is finished. And the rest of my room by default is now trashed, but that's okay, we're making progress. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog here. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Please let us know what you're doing down below. We can learn from each other. That's why I love this community so, so, so much. If you are teaching distance or hybrid or back in person, I hope that you are staying safe. I hope the start of your school year is smooth as can possibly be. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.